I tried to beat Pokemon Infinite Fusion as Ash Ketchum. This means using only Ash's Pokemon and fusing them together to create some adorable and cursed new Pokemon. I'm also adding a bunch of my extra rules to make this challenge even harder. Could Ash and his cursed combinations conquer Pokemon Infinite Fusion? Well, let's find out. Our first job is picking our starter, and Ash has a huge selection to choose from. Except we don't get a choice at all. Since I named myself Ash, the game only lets me take one Pokemon as my starter, Pikachu. Ash's adorable ketchup-loving mouse, who was going to become very unadorable later on. But for now, we have to battle our rival, Gary Mother Flippin' Oak, a man who oozes with Gigachad energy, unlike some of our other rivals in the series. Gary uses a double EV fusion, but this this thing just looks like an Eevee who murdered all of the Eevee Lucians and is wearing their skin as a sign of dominance. After Ash was done bonding with our new Pikachu, a few Thundershocks from our chubby rat just barely give us the win over the Eevee squared. Wow, I actually beat my rival. Normally we have to wait until the end of the season for that. Ash has a lot of awesome Pokemon, so let me know in the comments which two Pokemon of Ash's would you fuse together. It could be something awesome or something nightmarish. Anyway, after smuggling Don Oak's package, over the Pallet Town border, now it was time to start catching and fusing some of Ash's Pokemon. Now on Route 1, we can find God, wielding his almighty scepter. Except, sadly, we can't catch Bidoof since Ash never owned one in the anime. However, on Route 1, we can catch Ash's Kalos bird, Fletchling, followed by his Vampy on Route 22. I absolutely adore this guy. Look at how cute this little elephant is. One life equals one head pat for this certified good boy. After slapping around the ugliest Herpene I've ever seen, we quickly remind Gary who his daddy is. Beginner's luck, Ashy boy. Beginner, Gary, I've been losing battles for over two decades. Show some respect. Our team was starting to form, but there's one more Pokemon we can get now, and it's found in a hidden area, as by walking into these trees, we can access the secret garden, and it's here that we can find one of Ash's coolest Pokemon, Riolu. Another adorable little guy who eventually becomes one of Ash's best Pokemon. Ew, it's a Pichu. Pikachu, eliminate this mascot imposter. Pokemon Academy, learn all there is to know about Pokemon. <laughs> I don't need that. I'm Ash Ketchum, baby. I can rely on plot armor and outright cheating to get my wins. Bug type Pokemon are my passion. Ugh, bugs. I hate those things. After confronting my ugly, ugly feelings in the Viridian Forest, as well as this menacing, godly spider, we reach Pewter City for our first gym fight. We have these four Pokemon to fuse, and I had to decide what combinations to go with. Let me know in the comments who you would fuse together, but for me, I decided to fuse Pikachu and Fletchling into this adorable little bird. This leaves Fampi and Riolu to basically become a Riolu with a trunk. So, with our new combinations, we were ready for Brock. Usually, Brock is a pushover with his useless rock collection. But in Infinite Fusion Modern Mode, now he uses the powerful Steel type, so I was a little terrified. I'm Brock. I'm Pewter's gym leader. Uh, dude, we've known each other for like 25 years. Brock opens with a duck, basically a cyborg Psyduck. Since it's a water steel type, I have our Pika Bird quickly wipe it out with two super effective Thundershocks. We were looking dominant until Brock sent in his Steed Jr. It's so bulky that our Thundershocks barely touch it, while Brock's confusions are devastating. Our mascot bird was quickly crushed, leaving it all up to Trunks here. Except we have no moves that can do anything to this steely tank. This gives Brock a free pass to absolutely annihilate our final Pokemon. In true Ash Ketchum fashion, we had lost to Brock. Our Pokemon was so weak, and Brock's are insanely tough. This challenge was already insane, and it was only going to get harder from here. Clearly, I needed to bring my A-game, so it was time for Ash Ketchum to step up. First, I backtracked to grab some Oran Berries and slapped those bad boys onto our team. Next, by talking to this guy in Pewter City, we can teach our fan Lou the move Mud Slap, and this is our key to victory. So, with a new plan that doesn't involve breaking the sprinklers, we stepped up to Brock. This time, we lead with Fanlu as Brock hits us with a Metal Claw. However, this activates my Trap Card as we use Counter to deal double damage right back. One more of these on the next turn slaughters the Metal Duck, once again bringing out the Demonic Steed Jr. Last time, our Fanlu was powerless against this thing, but now we have Mud Slap, which does some damage, but more importantly, lowers Brock's accuracy. I'm able to land three of these by the time our elephant falls, 
and in true Ash style, it was all up to our fused Pikachu. And just as planned, the mini Steelix misses its first confusion as we begin firing off Thundershocks. Even though Brock cheats by using a full heal, it's not enough to save him as Pikaling lands one last Thundershock to crush the Steel Snake, giving Ash the win and some well-deserved revenge on Brock. It was tough, but that's our first gym badge secured. On to Route 3, and after beating up this awesome looking set of Katakis, we can hunt for our next Pokemon. And after looking for ages, I was finally able to find a Sand Isle. Now just to catch it, and... Oh, never mind then. Back to hunting, and... Okay, now the game's just mocking me. Is that a Sand Isle cosplaying as a bunny? Smash. But little did I know, it was about to get actually spooky as I stumbled across this. Quick, kill it, kill it before it breeds. After facing more horrible unknown fusions, we finally found another sand isle, and this time Ash didn't kill it. We caught the desert croc, but can't use it until it evolves as Ash only owned a crocorock, not a sand isle. Anyway, in other news, Nurse Joy won the lottery and quit the Pokemon Center, so now everyone's Pokemon is just dying. My Pokemon need assistance. Where is the nurse? While investigating Mount Moon, we come across Team Rocket. Oh god, that's so adorable. Please, notice me, Sanpai. While battling, our Pikaling evolved into an almighty Pika Inder, giving us a nice power boost which we desperately need since our fan loot is straight trash. Oh my god, Piplup, what have they done to you? Father, kill me. After slaughtering a wave of grunts, we can take a rest in this courtyard where I pen a beautiful letter to our lovely rival. Dear Gary, you suck. Two L's and zero W's. Love, Ash. Team Rocket's plan to fuse three Pokemon fails miserably, clearing us to reach Cerulean City. But before moving Moving on, there are some huge encounters for Ash over on Route 4, the first of which is Ash's brawling bug, Heracross, most notable for its attempt to cannibalize Bulbasaur. He's weird, but an absolute powerhouse. Welcome to the team. But next is a much harder Pokemon to find, as this one is incredibly rare at an encounter rate of only 1%. I hunted for an eternity, finding all kinds of cute buddies like Hoopma to cursed combinations like this Zoo Hoot who looks dressed for a Panic at the Disco concert. But after a while, I finally found what I was looking for, Charmander. Ash's OG fire type and one of his most iconic Pokemon. Just don't fuse it with water or it'll literally die. Anyway, I quickly evolved it into Charmeleon and now that we had six Pokemon, I decided to unfuse and refuse our team. With that, now we had an improved fighting type in Heralu, Chachu, who's basically just a Pikachu that's angry he's been set on fire, and an adorable fan Inder. Hey Ash, I got that letter. You better be ready to pay. Oh please, just give up Gary. You don't stand a chance. Give up? Me? Ha, huh, yeah maybe. When elephants fly... Oh, you've got to be kidding me. After Gary rage quit the lobby, Ash headed north to crush Nugget Bridge before coming across probably my favorite sprite so far, as well as one of the most cursed. Well, that was the most cursed until I witnessed Bill literally fuse himself with a Rhydon. That's got to be against the Geneva Convention, Bill, you twisted freak. Anyway, with that horror behind us, after spending over an hour helplessly running around in the grass, eventually we find Ash's Squirtle. This is the coolest turtle out there and I'm glad to have it on the team. And at this point, I need to point out that if you fuse two Squirtle together, you get the whole Squirtle squad come through. This might be my favorite sprite so far. With that taken care of, now it was time to take on the next gym. While Misty is usually a water type trainer, now, like many Australians, she's turned to ice. And I have just the thing, Heralu. With Riolu's force palm move, combined with Heracross's large attack stat, we have a demon on our hands who is ready to demolish this gym. And that's exactly what happened happened. Misty leads with her Glaeri, who is quad weak to fighting, so a single force palm takes it down. Her Mantine Lapras combo does put up a fight, but Ash's plot armor kicks in as we hit two critical hits, clearing our Heralu to slay the Loch Ness fusion with force palm. Fine, take the stupid badge. Just give me back my bike. Uh, yeah, about that. Gotta go. At this point, the map opens up and we can get a few more of Ash's Pokemon. First up, on Route 5, we can finally finish our Kanto starter collection by hunting ourselves a Bulbasaur. And I know exactly who I want to fuse this guy with. Welcome to the team, Bulba. Next up, in the Diglett Cave, we can catch Asher's Gibble, the cutest little shark I know. And finally, after picking up the fishing rod, we can get our hands on Asher's best, strongest Pokemon, Krabby! 
I love this crab and its cookie cry, although I do worry for the well-being of Ash's fingers. I decided to fuse our cute little starters into this adorable little bulb tool. While it may look innocent, this Pokemon can be a toxic demon. And as much as I would love a powerful Blastoise Venusaur fusion, since Ash never evolved either of these starters, neither can I. By fusing our crab with our shark, we get this epic water dragon named Gibby, before Faninda evolves into... What is that? You look terrible. Thankfully, by using a DNA reverser, we flip the abomination around into this much cooler looking Fletch fan. Anyway, now it was time for the SSN and... Oh God, Pikachu, what did they do to you? Our angry, fiery Pikachu wipes the floor with Gary, leaving his cheerleaders in tears. But now we've got the cut HM and can visit the Vermilion Gym in search of Ash's third badge. Surge has ditched his electricity for some fisting fighters, so I decided to bring these three Pokemon to the fight. I tell you kid, electric Pokemon saved me during the war. Uh, okay, then why are you using fighting types? Um... Surge's big-nosed Mankey starts with a seismic toss before our based Gibby hits a huge crab hammer, leaving it on only one HP thanks to Sturdy. Surge heals, but resistance to the shark Crabbo is futile as one more crab hammer takes it down. Next in is Coughloom, and Surge goes back to his wartime roots, firing off a full mag of bullet seeds. However, Gibby hangs on like a true soldier with a second crab hammer returning fire for the KO. But Surge's last Pokemon is this. What a terrifying an awesome looking Pokemon. The Houndoom Gallade Fusion quickly finished Gibby, but now it was time for our Kanto starters to shine. I was hoping to do a Toxic, Leech Seed, Protect, and Sleep Powder stall combo here, but Leech Seed missed, Surge got a flinch, and my starter combo quickly fell. Yeah, well done guys. This is why Charizard is the only Kanto starter that Game Freak actually loves. We were down to a tense 1v1, but our Heralu is still a monster. After tanking a Rock Smash, our Bug Buggy Beast lands a super effective Force Palm, ending our war with Surge and awarding Ash with yet another badge. Moving on, and it's a long road to the fourth badge, so I decided to mix up our fusions, finally combining these two into this adorable little Herosaur. Now, the road to Celadon City is long, and this gives us access to a bunch more of Ash's Pokemon. First up, on Route 7, we can get one of my favorite Pokemon, Gligar. Just look at this adorable face, just begging to join the team. Gligar and Ash really are an iconic duo. Next, after catching this Spearow, Ash gets his revenge on the Spearow population by immediately tossing it away, trading it with this guy who gives us a Farfetch'd. Just don't tell anyone in the comments that Ash actually had a Galarian Farfetch'd. While battling through the trainers with our cursed Riolu Krabby Fusion, we came across this. A winged bee barrel. Truly a beautiful angel sent by Lord Helix. So we killed it for EXP, helping our Riolu Krabby to fully evolve into a beastly Kingla Lucario combination. This guy looks so weird, but I kinda like it. After snatching up this Apom, one of Ash's cutest Pokemon, we can also find ourselves a Mankey, who immediately evolves into Ash's prized fighter, Primate. Funnily enough, both of these new Pokemon are notorious for stealing Ash's hat. Anyway, after slaying some demonic fusions like this Sheldum, as well as Unsoul, a biblically accurate looking angel, we had just one more encounter, and this is a good one. Chikorita. Hey, wait, something's not right about this one. And speaking of not being right, why is this Togepi naked? Put some pants on, egg. It took me ages of grinding, but I was determined, and eventually, we found ourselves a beautiful, non-imposter Chikorita. With a quick evolution into Bayleaf, we had one of Ash's most affectionate Pokemon. It cried when it was left with Professor Oak, and that kind of breaks my heart. With all our new Pokemon, as well as Crocorock, who evolved and is now finally usable, it was time to create some powerful, crazy fusions. First up is Pikachu and Gligar, who basically create a cute, budget-looking Zapdos. Our Gibble and Bayleaf then fuse into an almighty being, a lemon. My god, you look juicy. These two combine into one of the goofiest looking Pokemon ever. And for the love of all things monetized, its name is pronounced Char Ape. Got it? Moving on, Heracross and Farfetch'd become this handsome man, the single duck Pokemon. So, ladies, his DMs are well and truly open. Now, after creating this strange fusion of Lucario and Bulbasaur, it was time for my favorite Ash fusion yet. See, Ash's Crocorock needs his glasses and becomes a mess without them. We may not have any glasses, but you know who does? Ash's Squirtle. So 
So, by fusing these two together, we get this. A tiny Crocorock with an awesome typing, as well as some equally awesome shades. Now that Crocorock had his glasses once again, our new team was ready to press onwards. In the Lavender Tower, Gary rolls in with his adoring fans, but instead of smelling us later, he'll just be smelling this fat L as Bulbario rips through the majority of his team thanks to Power Up Punch. Now go fuse your Raticate with a grave, Gary. We can't summit Lavender Tower without the Sylph Scope, so our next stop is Celadon City. Oh, gross. Who left this giant pile of poo in the trash? Squirtle Squad, clean this up. Speaking of trash, Team Rocket are literally selling locked up Pokemon down here. That is so disgusting and morally wrong. Wait, uh, do you have any Greninja for sale? Uh, nope. So disgusting and morally wrong. In pursuit of Team Rocket, we team up with Erika and charge through the Celadon sewers, witnessing some inhumane fusions like this Raticate caught in a mousetrap. Gross. Uh, I think that guy's drowning. Should we help him? <laughs> this is his punishment for not selling me a Greninja. Oh god, get down! That Snorlax is gonna pop! We continued moving through the sewers, slapping grunts along the way, until we were faced by the big bad boss himself, Giovanni, and I was ready to crush him. Except that's not what happened. In true Ash Ketchum fashion, we got utterly decimated. Giovanni has this stupid bulky behemoth that basically has no weaknesses. I had no answer for this demon, and right before my eyes, every single one of Ash's fusions were brutally swept into the trash. Yet another loss. That fight wasn't even close, and I was really worried. The game was going to get insanely hard, and Ash's Pokemon just weren't keeping up. The chances of Ash beating Pokemon Infinite Fusion were looking grim. However, I wasn't ready to give up. We needed a power boost, and I intended to get it by evolving Ash's Charmeleon into his disobedient son, Charizard. Just please don't set me on fire. But we weren't done yet, as we can also evolve Ash's other fire flying type, Talonflame. By combining our two newcomers and learning some new moves, Ash's two brain cells had sparked a new plan to tackle Giovanni. This time, I lead with Pikagar and immediately hit an uwu nuzzle, paralyzing the floating smoke ball. We barely survive a sludge bomb, and this is crucial as it lets Pikagar land knockoff, removing the black sludge that Giovanni uses for recovery. Knowing that the sludge bomb is inbound, I can freely switch into our steel grass ball Barrio before planting a leech seed, sapping his health each turn. This setup cripples Honchzing, allowing us to gradually wear it down before slaying the puffball with a metal claw. Next in is Ketgon, who lands some big hits, but our ball Barrio is a bold beast, just surviving long enough to also KO Giovanni's dragon with metal claw. This brings out this spooky Picasso here, a ghost normal type, which is a deadly combination. Our ball Barrio quickly goes down, and I needed a hero in these trying times. But who better to bust a ghost than the Squirtle Squad, baby? He's just looking back at you, saying, yeah, I got this. After somehow surviving a huge hyper beam, this gives our Crocodile the all clear to land two super effective crunches, chomping Giovanni's ghost down to size. This leaves only Giovanni's pink goo, which instantly transforms into my tiny croc. Identity theft is not a joke, Giovanni, and this imposter was doing damage, sweeping through half of my team. But thankfully, our shiny new Charflame has enough firepower to clean things up, with an air cutter ending Giovanni's final Pokemon. The big boss flees, but I had to work so hard for that win, and we have a stack of even harder fights on the horizon. So I was really worried, but for now, we can breathe easy because we're going from the big boss to the bug boss. Yeah, Erika finally ditched Grass, one of the weakest types in all of Pokemon, and instead uses another one of the weakest types. Good job, Erika. Now, let me ask you this. Who would win? A few buggy boys or a fire-flying Charflame with the raw power of Charizard and the speed of Talonflame. Uh, yeah, this guy. Charflame absolutely tore Erika's team to shreds with a brutal onslaught of heat waves and air slashes. We completely squashed her like a bug, giving Ash a smooth fourth badge. Halfway there. With Erika's bug gym left in a blaze, we pressed onwards to the Pokemon Tower, and this place is cursed. There's zombies who want my blood, ghosts, and some of the spookiest fusions in the entire game, as well as this Cubone Kangaskhan fusion that breaks my heart. 
But once we reach the top of the tower, we're given the pokey flute, and this is huge for us, as it means that we can wake up this slumbering Snorlax, whose sprite looks like he's about to belly flop into a pool. We quickly catch Snorlax, giving us one of Ash's strongest, laziest, and most iconic Pokemon. One bike, please. Okay, here you go. Hey, Misty, check out my new bike. Give me that bike, Ash. You still owe me a new one. Not only do we have Ash's gluttonous oath, but now we have access to a bunch more of Ash's Pokemon. Pokemon. First up is Cyndaquil, the adorable little fire type. Next, after taking the cycling road to Fuchsia City, we can enter the Safari Zone. Here, I'm able to catch Caterpie, the very first Pokemon that Ash ever caught. After that, next is one of my favorites, as we eventually hunt down Trico. I love this guy and his chill vibes, and I have big plans for him later on. Now, our last catch for now is a tricky one because it's Tauros. Not only is this bull rare and has a high chance to flee, but on top of that, Ash didn't have a Tauros. This madman had 30 of these rampaging bulls. So I had no choice but to sit in the safari zone and grind for hours. It took an eternity and a lot of them just ran away. But eventually, I had caught a whole pack of bulls just like Ash. Was it worth it? No, but it will be if you like the video. Now it's time to take on Koga, who's gone over to the dark side. To prepare, I evolved a bunch of our new Pokemon, giving Ash access to his Quilava, Butterfree, Crocodile, and Sceptile, the latter of which literally 1v1 the Darkrai, so I'm glad to have it on the roster. But Koga's team is no joke, so I fused up a new team of awesome looking Pokemon to try and earn Ash's fifth badge. Koga leads with this poisonous dog, as I send in our steel bug, Butterario. We tank a Dark Pulse for big damage, but after putting it to bed with sleep powder, a single bug buzz destroys the... Oh, whatever that thing is. Next is Abtop, who I also put to sleep before Aura Sphere rips it apart. However, Koga got insanely lucky, waking up after just one turn before finishing our Butterbug with close combat. At this point, I had an Ash moment, as my U-turn with Pikagar couldn't get the kill, and I was crippled by Pursuit on the way out. Nice job, Ash. But now it was time for Herizard, basically a Charizard covered in Heracross armor. Koga switches into his Honchbar, as a super effective brick break does solid damage. A drill peck cripples our armored Charizard, but he holds on and thankfully lands a Mega Horn to pick up the KO. After quickly finishing Abtop on the next turn, Koga was down to only his Sludge Dog, who isn't an imposter this time. It's a tanky behemoth, so I need a plan to take it down. And for once, Ash was prepared. First, our Herizard lands a Willow Wisp for the burn before falling. Next, Pikagar can knock off Weirion, banishing its leftovers to the Shadow Realm. Pikachu does fall though, leaving us in a 1v1. But thankfully, Ash's last remaining soldier is a tank. This fusion of Snorlax and Donphan is bulky, hits hard, and is immune to poison thanks to Snorlax's ability. As such, Snorfan has no trouble finishing the fight with a few body slams. With Koga squashed by our tanky oaf, Ash had badge number five. After the battle, I added two new fusions to our roster. One is an absolute powerhouse combination of Sceptile and Talonflame, and the other one is this. There's something so unsettling about this image. Onto Saffron City, where Team Rocket have completely taken over. Oh, it's the police. Do something already. Sorry, kid. The law prevents anyone from taking action against criminals unless they're of the ages 10 and under. Oh, fine. I'll do it myself. So, Ash stormed the Silphco building. Being the hero that he is, Ash rescued all the employees being held hostage throughout the building. And as a reward, this employee just gives us a Lapras, which is really fitting since Ash saves his Lapras Lapras from Team Rocket in the anime too. After reaching the top floor, Gary decides that the middle of a hostage situation is the best time to get his revenge on Ashy Boy. And this battle was insane. We started out strong with a few easy KOs, trading Pokemon back and forth. But then Gary sent out this, Ryupion, a fast and strong psychic type who instantly crushed literally half of my team. This left me in a 2v2, but thankfully, Butterario could put the puppy to sleep before finishing it off with two 
bug buzzers. But we weren't out of the woods yet, as Gary's final Pokemon is a steel bug of his own. With my two remaining Pokemon, I just don't have a way of damaging this thing. Septflame can barely scratch it, and things get really scary when it starts setting up Swords Dance. Septflame quickly falls to an Iron Head, leaving it all down to a 1v1 between two steel bugs. An Iron Head from Niniard puts me on the brink of death, and I have no choice but to put it to sleep and land an Aura Sphere for solid damage. If Niniard wakes up here, we definitely lose. So I pray to RNGesus and... It stays asleep! Ash's plot armor kicks in, giving us just enough time to finish off Gary's final Pokemon with Aura Sphere. Ugh, I nearly had you that time, Ashy boy. You just got lucky. Oh, please, Gary, it wasn't even close. But our troubles weren't even close to being over, as next, we confront Giovanni. Oh, it's you again. Team Rocket's one weakness, a brainless child. Not just one brainless child, but two brainless childs. You might as well surrender now. We team up with Gary for a double battle, and this looks really simple. I mean, we have 10 Pokemon, while Giovanni only has four. Surely this fight would be pretty straightforward, right? Ladies and gentlemen, we got destroyed. Gary and I were embarrassed, spat on, and crushed. Firstly, Gary is useless and contributes nothing here. His Pokemon are garbage. I can't imagine anyone almost losing to this pathetic trainer. Secondly, Giovanni is so strong. Some of this filthy cheater's Pokemon are overleveled, and his roster is full of broken Pokemon, like this pest of a levitating steel ghost. Combine all this with the fact that Giovanni actually has some double battle strats, and the end result is this. But Ash isn't one to give up, so I return to Giovanni with a new plan. And don't get me wrong, Gary is still useless. But this time, I lead with my trusty Pikagar and focus on using the power of the Uwu Nuzzle, spreading paralysis onto Giovanni's lead pair before Pikagar falls. This helps us take down Honchzing, and body slams from our chunky Snorfan can also paralyze Kekdon, as well as Donzor. These statuses make a huge difference, and our cursed Apom Bull even got a chance to shine, finishing off Donzor, as well as weakening Aegigius, before Sept Flame finishes the fight. We may have gotten the win, but those two fights show just how strong our opponents were getting, while we still only have Ash's Pokemon, most of which aren't even fully evolved. Once again, I was not confident about Ash's chances of becoming champion, but we had to try. Thanks for saving me. I'm so rich that I can offer you anything. Anything? Well, can you help me find my dad? Uh, best I could offer you is another weak Pokemon for your roster. We take Totodile, meaning that Ash now had all three of his cute Johto starters. Now Saffron City has returned to normal, and oh my god, what is happening here? It looks like the set of paranormal activity. It's time for our next gym, and to prepare, I decided to end the question of what do you get when you cross a crab with a crocodile and yeah i'm sorry i asked another important question what do you say when you find your lost keys oh my key Sorry. Terrible jokes aside, what's not a joke is Sabrina's Fairy Gym. Her team is stacked with powerful fairy fusions, so I decided to bring these combinations to take her on. I dislike fighting. Uh, then why did you become a gym leader? Now, you might think that we were due for some good luck after our misfortunes of our last two fights. Wrong. RNGesus spat in my face, as on turn one, Storfan was burned by a flamethrower, neutering its attack. This means that our rolling oath has way less impact, instantly falling against Sabrina's second Pokemon. But here is where things get ridiculous. Because here, our Herizard missed three out of its six Mega Horns, despite having an 85% accuracy. As a result, Herizard fell, and the rest of my team quickly crumbled. Once again, Ash had been destroyed. It really is starting to feel like the anime here. Thankfully, our next attempt went much smoother. This time, Snorfan wasn't burned, meaning we can finish Togetails while our Snorfan is still healthy. So we can do decent damage to Silvoir before Snorfan goes down. We hit two Mega Horns on the first attempt this time, cleaning up the Waifu bait. With our team intact, we can bring Sep Flame in against this haunted Marowak, and after some chip damage from Will-O-Wisp, a single Giga Drain gets the KO. This leaves only Sabrina's Cleflix, a beefy steel fairy. I have no hope of damaging this absolute tank, so instead, burn it with Will-O-Wisp. The Cosmic Snake just spams Seismic Toss, so we stall by using Roost. This buys us plenty of time, as Sabrina watches her Cleflix slowly burn to a crisp right in front of her eyes. 
That was much cleaner the second time around, and now Ash has six gym badges. No thanks to you. And this is a significant point in our challenge, as now we can surf outside of battle, opening up the map for us to get a bunch of new items and Pokemon. So, after teaching Surf to my Apom Bull, a visual which utterly horrifies me, we headed north of Cerulean to Route 23. Oh god, it's the angel again! Is this a sign of good fortune? Spoiler, it was not. Here, I'm able to pick up some useful TMs, as well as find Ash's OG bird, Pidgeotto. You know, the flying type that he tried to beat the rock gym with. Next, by surfing in the water of Celadon City, we can find... Gripper? I don't know how you got that name, and I don't want to know. But here, we're also able to find Ash's Muck, the cutest, most affectionate pile of sludge that I've ever seen, and also the source of some cursed Pokemon fusions. Our next stop is Route 21, south of Pallet Town, where we can find Ash's next Pokemon, Turtwig, the grass-type Sinnoh starter who literally yeeted a Rampardos against Rourke. But there's one more Pokemon here that's even more significant, and that Pokemon is... Mimey, Ash's legal stepdad, who is the leading cause of some of the craziest Pokemon fusions. After surfing south to Cinnabar Island, I evolved our new catches into Pidgeot and Torterra. By now, Ash has a huge roster of Pokemon to choose from, so I decided to experiment with our new Pokemon and see what demonic fusions I could make. First is Muck, who basically makes anything it touches look like death. But if you pair it with Mr. Mime, you get this sad looking clown. And combined with Donphan, you get whatever this horrifying thing is. But when fused with Crocodile, you get Muttadile, this derpy poisonous croc with an incredible typing and solid stats. Next is Ash's Torterra, who can make some of the coolest fusions in the game. However, my favorite is this Lapras Torterra fusion, as it's got an incredible typing and access to great moves. But by far, my favorite Ash fusions are the ones with his dad, Miney. You can take anything, throw Mr. Mime into the mix, and it becomes something ridiculous. I mean, just look at all the crazy creatures you can make with this thing. For now, I'm fusing Mimey with Snorlax to create the fattest and creepiest looking clown you've ever seen. But this clown has some tricks up its sleeve. After turning Pikachu and Sceptile into this awkward looking thing, I brought back some old fusions, meaning that this was our beautiful roster. Aren't they just... Charming? Blaine is a master of fire-type Pokemon. He'll burn you to a crisp. Uh, not anymore, he's not. Now Blaine uses that big bald head to tap into some psychic powers. Hello there, do you want to trade your Raichu for Electrode? Raichu? How dare you? In this house, we say no to Thunderstones. In the Pokemon Mansion, we find some burglars, but stealing is wrong. So we teach them a lesson by... Stealing from them? Makes sense to me, Ash. Anyway, while exploring this haunted house, we find some of the craziest fusions, like this Spiragon Z, that is going to haunt my dreams. Then there's Klingrigius, who looks like a medieval torture device. And Jindalee here makes me want to close my eyes and never open them. But it's not all bad, as we do find Ash's next Pokemon, Chimchar. He's one of my favorites, and I will never forgive Paul for how he treated this little guy. He's going to play a big role later on, but for now, we find Blaine hanging out alone in the haunted basement, like any sane person would, clearing us to challenge his gym. Inside, we're asked all kinds of important questions, like are you subscribed to the channel? Because if you're not, you'll be haunted by my associate here, Mr. Lax. Do you really want that? To demonstrate Mr. Lax's power, Ash stepped up to Blaine to try and earn our next badge. Blaine leads with... What in God's name is that? Is it even alive? It's a Mr. Mime Fusion Showdown, but Mr. Lax is ready to serve up some delightfully devilish cheese. Because after soaking up a Zen headbutt, Mr. Lax slaps his tummy with belly drum, maxing out our attack. He munches on a mid-fight snack, with the citrus berry giving us some recovery. But here is where things get evil, because now we can use one of Mr. Mime's moves, the Ton Pass. This lets us switch out, but importantly, passes on our insane attack boost to the incoming Char Flame. Our boosted bird is ready to go wild, with a flame charge sending that cursed clown all the way to hell. Next up is Blaine's Octitor, but naturally, a single acrobatics is all we need to... Wait, what? It lived thanks to Focus Sash before charging up a big hydro pump, 
but we dodge it. Iron Jesus finally smiles upon Ash, allowing Charflame to slay the colossal squid, with Wayne's final two Pokemon never standing a chance against our boosted beastly bird. We got a little lucky there, but that's just the Ash Ketchum plot armor finally starting to work. That's seven badges down, one to go. After seeing Team Rocket on the island, we give chase, ending up in an ocean current puzzle. And look, if this was a real Ash Ketchum run, the video would end right here, because there's no way that Ash and his two brain cells would ever figure this out. After that eternal struggle, we arrive in Mount Ember, where Team Rocket have caught all three legendary birds and fused them into one. Giovanni forces us into a battle, and our track record against him is terrible in this run, but this time, things will be different. Because while his Zap Molcuno is an absolute powerhouse in this 3v1, Ash was ready to use his favorite strategy, cheating. By using our Lap Terra, we don't even have to battle these birds, as Perish Song guarantees that they all die in three turns. So, after some stalling, our derpy Mutterdial watches on as the three legendaries fall to Perish Song Cheese. Ah, uh, you cheated, Ash. Yeah, but this is my show. I can do whatever I want if the plot needs it. Pfft, you're washed up. It's not even your show anymore. Oh, you'll pay for that, old man. It's looking intensely into your eyes, as if it were giving you a challenge. Oh, challenge this. In search of revenge against Giovanni, Ash backtracked to Viridian City for one last showdown with the Rocket Boss, as well as earning the final badge. But this endgame is going to be insanely tough, so to prepare, I decided to hunt down the rest of Ash's available Pokemon. First, I evolved our cute little Chimchar into this awesome looking Infernape. Alright, let's go teach that loser Paul a lesson. Next, by taking the train to Goldenrod in Johto, we can buy a Duskstone, which in this game evolves our Gligar into Gliscor one of Ash's coolest looking Pokemon. And if you don't like the video, Gliscor will cry. So do the right thing. Moving on, and just south of Goldenrod, we can find ourselves a Radicate. Yeah, Ash did technically have one of these for like five minutes, so I guess it counts. At least it appears more than Ash's biological father. Next, in the secret forest east of Celadon, we catch Ash's sparkly bird, Noctowl. But Keegan, that one isn't shiny. Oh, sure it is. Look at all the sparkles. See? So many sparkles. It's so shiny. Now we had just two Pokemon left to complete our first goal of catching all of Ash's available Pokemon. And these two are some of his strongest. First, First, in Lavender Tower, we can catch a Ghastly, which then evolves all the way into Gengar, Ash's one and only spooky ghost that is going to be insanely useful. Our final hunt takes us to Route 14, and this place has some cool fusions, like this Gribass that looks like the depressed Goofish. Yeah, that one. There's also this couple in a double battle whose lead pair is named Together Forever. But in the back, they've got the most powerful fusion I've ever seen, Ligma. It took Ash weeks to recover from Ligma, but after that, we eventually find ourselves a Dratini. I use our Master Ball, since this is our final catch, before evolving the little blue snake into Ash's powerhouse dragon, Dragonite. He may look strong, but Ash's Dragonite really just likes hugs. With that, we had completed our first goal of catching every single one of Ash's available Pokemon in Infinite Fusion. Now, our only remaining goal was to try and defeat the insanely tough Pokemon League and become champions. But before that, there's something important that I need to take care of. Ash released both his Butterfree and Lapras in the anime, and since this is the Ash run, I thought it was only appropriate that we do the same. So, after fusing our two outbound Pokemon into this Loch Ness Butterfly, it was time to release. Say it with me, everyone. Bye-bye, Lapfree. Can I get some Fs in the comments for losing my only Ice type and Quiver Dance user, please? So, that leaves us with these Pokemon for Ash to rely on, well, as well as the other 29 Tauros sitting in this box. Our final gym fight is against Giovanni, who now just wants a normal life with his normal types. With all these Pokemon to choose from, let me know in the comments who you would fuse. For me, I already had some deadly combinations in mind. Introducing Genros, a spooky bull straight out of hell with an incredibly powerful ghost normal typing. Next, by combining Asha's Raging Ape, 
with his raging ace, we get this adorable little guy. Infertu is pretty strong, but even more so once I give it a light ball that I got from this guy in Vermilion. Fusing two of Ash's powerful Galar champions gives you this friendly looking guy, but don't be fooled. Dragario is a beastly steel dragon that can do some serious damage. After adding Crook Core to the roster, as well as reintroducing Ash's obese dad, Mr. Lax, we were charged and ready to tackle the final gym. Giovanni, apologize for calling me a washed up trainer who got kicked off his own show. Never. Fine. Then let let me introduce you to Mr. Lax. But Giovanni has a plan, as his Ditto Fusion immediately transforms into Mr. Lax. Ash went from having no dad to now having two of them. However, Giovanni doesn't really know how to control the power of the Lax, allowing me to set up a belly drum. I hit the imposter with an encore, and this causes Giovanni to switch out. But I immediately use Baton Pass, allowing Mr. Lax to pass on his plus six attack to the incoming Dragario. Now we had a busted, boosted steel dragon ready to cause mayhem. A single Aqua Tail quickly crushes Giovanni's Snorking, and while his Coffer King does land a play rough, Dragario hangs on before banishing that ghost with a Dragon Rush. Sadly, Marpom does finally slay our Dragon, but this is the perfect time for our Genros to make its debut, as our Ghost Normal Bull is a hard counter for fighting types. A few Surfs give us that KO, and while Tyrancy is a tank, our Punching Pikachu can slaughter the Rocky Egg with a quad effective Brick Break. Giovanni was down to only his Imposter, who tries to copy our style. But there's no replacement for Ash's Pikachu, as our Ace Fusion eliminates the Imposter with two Light Ball Boosted Brick Breaks. Team Rocket is finished, Giovanni. Yeah, just like your appearances in the show. Shut up. With that, Giovanni was in the dirt, and Ash had earned his eighth and final badge. In the show, Ash traded away both his Raticate as well as his Apom, and by fusing these together, oh god, I can see why he gave you guys away. That is a face that only a mother could love. After killing Ash's turtle by poisoning it with a muck, I added its carcass to our roster and headed towards the Pokemon League. We were stopped by our rival, but his team is really underleveled, and my spooky bull basically tore him to shreds. But He's going to have an insane team if we can make it to our next battle. Ash's journey through Victory Road was a similar story, and while we don't have any crazy difficult fights here, there were some awesome fusions, like this Roazard and a very beefy Quillo. Oh my god, Pika Cargo, my beloved mascot, what have they done to you? After being seduced by this beautiful Tan King and coming face to face with a derpy Quagon, we pressed on through the trials of Victory Road, bringing us to Indigo Plateau. Finally, Ash had reached the Pokemon League. This would be our toughest hurdle yet, as the Pokemon here range from incredibly strong to just downright broken. So we would have to fuse Ash's Pokemon to try and come up with the strongest team possible. First up is Ash's iconic ace, Pikachu, who I'm turning evil, because by fusing Pikachu with Gengar, we get this spooky electric mouse, Genshu. It's got insane stats, which get boosted even more thanks to our light ball, making this a monster. Next, we're creating a bulky behemoth by combining Ash's hungry Oath with his turtle. It may look friendly, but Snorterra is a toxic tank that's a nightmare to deal with. Our third slot is dedicated to two of my favorites on Ash's Sinnoh roster in Furcore. Personally, I'm horrified by the idea of a flying scorpion that also breathes fire, so it's perfect for our team. Now, after bringing back two of my favorite fusions from earlier, we had one more slot to fill, but who could we rely on to guide us to victory? Ash's dad, of course. By fusing Mimey with our rolling tank, we create Mr. Fan. Despite the fact that its armor looks like it's made out of balloons, this guy is beefy and has a stack of support moves. So these are our weird and wonderful team members. Could Ash finally conquer the Kanto Pokemon League and become a champion? Well, let's find out. Our first hurdle is the water type master, Lorelei. She leads with a very royal looking Polilion who sets up the rain. However, we have our demon, Genshu, who dethrones the Emperor Frog with a Thunderbolt. Next in is, what is that? It looks like something from a used car dealership. I try to Thunderbolt it, but Garakku soaks it up with the disguise ability. We're then hit by a big shadow claw and, Genshu just survives. This lets us land one more Thunderbolt, getting the KO this time around. 
but Lorelei's Scar Tops is much more threatening. It's got the swift swim ability, doubling its speed thanks to the rain. Although, since it's a ton of metal, it seems like a Pokemon that would sink more than it would swim. Regardless, the speedy steel type crushes our Genshu, and while I tried to stall with Snorterra, we were no match as Scar Tops decimated another one of Ash's Pokemon. This was looking rough, but thankfully, we still have Dragario. Earthquake is super effective, but Dragario lives on just over half. A Dragon Dance gives us a crucial stat boost, and after tanking another attack on the next turn, one more D-Dance leaves us with a crack Dragario. A Drain Punch just falls short of finishing Scar Tops, but the recovery this gives us is enough to just survive one more Earthquake before finishing the Metallic Menace on the next turn. Now Dragario was in the driver's seat as we can barely finish Pukatoom with just enough HP to survive the damage from its innards out ability. Next in is... A legendary? Are you kidding me? If we're gonna have to contend with legendaries, this is gonna be rough. Although, thankfully, this time we have a boosted dragon, so a dragon claw can slay the Milotina, and two drain punches are just enough to outlast Kingstar, giving Ash a dicey first win in the Pokemon League. Next up is Bruno, who no longer uses Onyx in the Elite Four. Good for you, buddy. He does use rock types though, so I lead with Dragario and try using our Dragon Dance combo. Tyran Flame's Crunch doesn't do much, so we're clear to hit the Dragon Dance floor twice. This plan works great at first, as we're able to Drain Punch Marorio into its grave. However, the King Ron that follows has Sturdy. This means that Dragario is decimated by a single Earthquake. Genshu can quickly get Ash's Revenge with an Energy Ball, as Bruno brings out Tyran Flame once again. I know it has Crunch, so switch into our behemoth, Snorterra. This thing is a bulky monster with Leech Seed, Toxic, Protect, and Synthesis. This insane combination helps us to stall out Bruno's Armazor, as well as wear down Kraloff before our poisonous crocodile finishes the job. Next up is... Oh my god, what is that nightmarish thing? I sent in Ash's dad to try and de-escalate the situation, but Mr. Fan died immediately. Aerodon could easily sweep through our entire team. I needed a plan, so send in Mutadial to nerf the legendary's attack with Intimidate. Side note, I don't know who would be intimidated by my derpy son here, but I'll take it. By pivoting with Infercore, I'm able to land three Intimidates, but at the expense of losing two team members. It was all down to Snore Terror. All I can do is helplessly stall, just praying that Bruno doesn't get a crit. And thankfully, Ash's plot armor holds firm, with Bruno's demonic-looking legendary slowly succumbing to Toxic and Leech Seed. His final Pokemon, Tyranflame, suffers a similar fate soon after, and somehow, Snorterra had clutched up like an absolute king. That fight was way too close. Our team was in shambles, and things were going to get much harder. However, our next fight with Agatha's poison types is much more straightforward. Her obese, spiky fish is zapped into oblivion by our spooky chew. We then continue trading Pokemon back and forth, as Ash's dad somehow manages to kill a Hydreigon Crobat fusion. Nice work, Pops. After more back and forth, Agatha's Ma'o emerges. And funnily enough, Ma'o is exactly what Agatha said once Halloween Pikachu hit the field. As a single Thunderbolt shoots that poisonous bird out of the sky, with Agatha's final Pokemon also being zapped into the Shadow Realm by Genshu. That win was clean, but next is Lance, a notoriously tough trainer. But never fear, because we have a Balloon Elephant. Lance uses flying types now, so it's the perfect time for Mr. Fan to roll in and set up Stealth Rocks. On the next turn, Toga Flame U turns out into this crazy looking Darkrai Dragonite combination. The Dark Knight rises as having done his job, Mr. Fan falls. I need a way to deal with this monster, so bring in my own Dragonite fusion. I'm confident I can survive one attack, so I click Dragon Dance. But for some reason, Lance uses a full restore? I'm confused, but take this blessing from RNGesus as an opening to set up one more Dragon Dance before Dark Knight charges up a big Dragon Pulse, which we barely survive. These boosts, combined with the stealth rocks left behind by Ash's dad, allow Dragario to absolutely tear through Lance's first five Pokemon, with Iron Head and Dragon Claw ripping his feathered friends out of the sky. While it does eventually fall to this incredible looking Agements, our Genshu can clutch up, just surviving a hit before one final Thunderbolt seals our win over the final member of the Elite Four. Now, only the champion remained. Ash entered the final room and walked right past him, straight into the Hall of Fame and...
Oh, never mind. This would be Asher's toughest challenge yet. A fight against Gary for the crown of champion. And I got annihilated. Gary's Pokemon are busted. Like this Baton Pass, Swords Dance, and Speed Boost Ninja. This guy also has a literal god in his back pocket. And to make matters worse, it's like 10 levels higher than me. Then he can whip out this triple fusion of all three Sinnoh starters. Like, I didn't even know that was a thing. Anyway, his whole team is just ridiculously strong and we didn't even stand a chance. Our entire roster was decimated. Ash was crushed. This felt like an impossible hurdle. Ash has some solid Pokemon, but nothing that compares to the broken combinations and outright power of Gary's team. As a result, I tried time and time again, but I just kept on failing. It was hopeless. This challenge just didn't seem possible. Until this attempt. Gary's Ninsharp is a problem that we need to take out quickly. A quad effective flamethrower from Infercore can bring it down to its focus sash. And after Gary burns a full restore, this time, flamethrower burns up the metallic bug in one shot. This brings out Gary's god, and I know that a thunderbolt is coming, so I switch into our ground type dad to soak up the vaults. On the next turn, I was hoping to set up a reflect, but a single extreme speed just wipes Mr. Fan off the map. So next I go with Dragario, who tanks an extreme speed much better, before boosting up with Dragon Dance. We finally get some luck, as Luxius misses at Stone Edge, allowing a drain punch to do big damage, while also recovering my dragon. Gary heals as I set up a second Dragon Dance. This Arceus is so strong, but Drain Punch Spam is our key to taking it down while keeping Dragario fully recovered. Now God was dead, and in previous battles, it would be a sweep from here, but not against Gary. His Tort Ert Neon is a filthy cheater, as this trio combination is bulky enough to tank a Dragon Claw before slaying my dragon with a close combat. But if Gary wants to use starters, I'll bring out mine. Our speedy Genshu moves first, and a super effective slam Sludge Bomb gives Ash a quick revenge knockout. Shandavile can be a nightmare, and I know a ghost move is coming, so switch into Snore Terror, who shrugs it off like a king. Shandavile then fires off a huge super effective blizzard, and... Snorterra just hangs on. I'm able to land a Leech Seed, and I need to keep Snorterra alive. So I protect on the next turn, as Leech Seed and Leftovers give me extra recovery. To buy more time, I pivot from Genshu back into Snorterra for free on another Shadow Ball. And now Ash's plot armor was kicking in, as Snorterra dodges a Blizzard, giving me free reign to fully recover with Synthesis. And after Infercore also dodged a Fire Blast, an Acrobatics can finally bust this annoying ghost. But Gary still has two powerful Pokemon, the first of which is Ryuion. Our flying, fire-breathing scorpion does land a burn, as well as some chip damage with acrobatics, but this new evolution is just too strong, with Psychic crushing Ash's beloved Sinnoh combo. However, it wasn't for nothing, as the damage done by Infercore means that our spooky Chew can quickly finish that box with a super effective Shadow Ball. Now Gary was down to his final Pokemon, but it's a tough one. Haxmans. This demon is insanely fast and strong, even outspeeding Genshu, decimating it with a single outrage. Ash only had two Pokemon left. I go with our poisonous, derpy crocodile, as Intimidate helps to nerf Gary's dragon. And it's all thanks to this that Muttadile barely survives an outrage before a quad effective ice punch deals enormous damage back to the dragon. Muttadile falls on the following turn, and with Gary's Lumberry healing his confusion, it was all down to this a 1v1 between Ash and Gary's final remaining Pokemon. And immediately, it gets scary as Haxman sets up a dragon dance, so we respond with Leech Seed. On the next turn, Gary fires off an outrage which cripples my beefy tank. This looks bad, and it looks even worse when I miss my toxic. Are you kidding me? With Haxmans in the red, I just protect on the next turn as Leech Seed puts this thing on the brink of death. Regardless, the situation was grim. Haxmans is too fast, and at this HP, I'm dead to a single outrage. However, one more Leech Seed turn is all I need to finish that dragon. And with it now being confused by outrage, as well as the 50% chance of protect working on a second consecutive turn, I have no choice but to roll the dice. One last prayer to RN Jesus. Please, Snorterra, protect! No! Ah! We have one more chance. We just need Haxmans to hit itself in confusion and... It does! The dragon is finally slain, and with that, Ash had become a champion in Pokemon Infinite Fusion. Jump into this video next for more Pokemon content. Like the video for that insane clutch ending, and let me know in the comments which Ash Fusion was your favorite. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.